New tonight, two former Trump White House lawyers meeting behind closed doors with the D.C. grand jury investigating Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the election. Sources telling CNN the testimony from Pat Cipollone and Patrick Philbin comes after weeks of talks with the Justice Department about just what they could discuss, specifically which topics were covered by executive privilege. Both men, of course, have also met with the January 6th Select Committee. Out front now, longtime conservative attorney George Conway and Jim Schultz, who is a White House lawyer for former President Trump. Gentlemen, good to see you both tonight. So, you know, George, as we look at this, even with these executive parameters in place, a grand jury could potentially get more information out of a witness than the Select Committee. Tonight, how worried do you think Donald Trump should be about this testimony? Well, I think he should be reasonably worried because I think the testimony that Cipollone gave uh, earlier in, before the January 6th committee was pretty substantial and pretty damning of him, even though Cipollone drew this artificial line that uh, executive privilege covered his com direct conversations with the president, uh, but not his conversations with people around the president. The, still, the message got through that he was strongly advising that the scheme to uh, displace the electors on January 6th was not was not a valid legal scheme and also he was clear that on january 6th itself he was he and others were urging uh that the that that the that the president is say make a statement uh to, to to quell the rioters and so i think the justice department is going to get a little bit more than that because like the justice department is the executive branch and it really doesn't make any sense to assert executive privilege against the executive branch and the Justice Department can go to the White House counsel's office and come back with a with a with a statement from them saying um, we waive the privilege or we don't we instruct you not to in invoke the privilege before the grand jury and they should be bound by that but we, we you know we can't really know and, and but that's mm -hmm. certainly ex I would expect more to come out than yeah. did in public. Well, in terms of you mentioned what we did learn uh, in terms of uh, some of that testimony to the January 6th Select Committee, you know, he also was very clear in addressing this push by Trump connected attorney Sidney Powell to seize voting machines. Take a listen to that moment. To have the federal government seize voting machines, that's a terrible idea for the country. That's not how we do things in the United States. There's no legal authority to do that. And there is a way to contest elections, you know, that, that happens all the time. But the idea that the federal government could come in and seize election machines, you know, that, that's, I don't, I don't understand why we even have to tell you why that's a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. A terrible idea. He knew that in that moment, knew it was also a legal gym and was and was willing to push back right in those days after the election, picking up on you know, what George was saying about how potentially more forthcoming he could be with the grand jury today, based on what you know of Pat Cipollone. How is he? How could this so be approached Pat, differently? Pat, so I think the difference between Congress and the Justice Department is that Congress acts in generalities, right? These folks don't do this every day. They conduct congressional investigations, work in generalities. When the DOJ gets involved and they start asking questions, they're going to have facts and evidence that probably that the, that the January 6th committee didn't, and they may have information that January 6th committee didn't, and they also, you know, are going to ask more specific questions and get that information in before the grand jury. I think that's just, that's what they do. That's their job. It's much different than the, a, a, a congressional investigation or a congressional hearing, you know, where it's being held by elected officials. These folks are career prosecutors and folks that are trained to do this. Um, and it's such an important point. Let's turn out of these documents, right? Learning more about the documents that were covered from Mar-a-Lago last month. I was struck by some of the comments from Bill Barr this afternoon. He was very clear. No excuse for the former president to have these documents. Take a listen. I, I can't think of a, of a legitimate reason why they, they should have been could be taken out of the uh, government, away from the government, if they're classified. I frankly am skeptical of this claim that I declassified everything, you know, because frankly, I think it's highly improbable. Uh, and second, if in fact he sort of stood over uh, scores of boxes, not really knowing what was in them, and said, I hereby declassify everything in here, that would be such an abuse. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, and s show such recklessness that it's almost worse than taking the documents. 
Right, so there's that issue. But, George, when we look at the documents, what we've learned about it and how commingled they were, again, not just in the cartons that were recovered from the storage room, but documents were commingled in the former president's office. Is there any defense left there for him to say, oh, you know, I didn't pack these boxes. I don't know. I didn't know what was in there. I don't know how they all got mixed up together. No, and, the, and that's why this is all so damning. For, for Trump. And I and I think the evidence is showing that he not only knew that he had these documents, he resisted producing the documents and his representatives made false statements to the government about whether he had any more of these documents when in fact they were in his office. So the question is going to be who told Christina Bob to make the representation that a diligent and thorough search had been made for responsive documents, namely documents that had classification markets, markings on them, like the documents we saw laid out on the floor of his personal office. And what, who, who was responsible for her making the representation that all such documents had been produced in response to the subpoena that was served this summer? And you have to think that she didn't do that by herself. Somebody told her to make those representations. And we heard Michael Cohen yesterday on, on CNN saying that basically he was asked all the time by, by Donald Trump to make false statements. Just tell them this. Just tell them that. Mm -hmm. And if Donald Trump did that with Christina Bob and that, and that representation in response to the subpoena, well, then he's obstructed justice. Uh, and add that to the many lists of questions, right, that we all have in terms of how all of this played out. Jim, when we, when we hear these comments from Bill Barr, DOJ may not need it, right? But I'm curious, do you think they, they help at all when it comes to this investigation in the court of public opinion, or even with Republicans who have really been, a number of them, as we have seen, twisting themselves in knots to rail against the investigation, to rail against the recovery of these documents? Does Bill Barr today change any of that? Uh, maybe as to those folks who aren't 100% loyal to Donald Trump, right? The folks who are 100% loyal to Donald Trump and, and believe everything he says are never going to be swayed by what Bill Barr says. So from a political perspective, no, they're not, they're, they're not going to be swayed by this at all. But in the general court of public opinion, I think having Bill Barr, former attorney general, coming out and saying basically this idea that he could, you know, willy-nilly, you know, declassified documents is garbage is certainly something that folks are going to, you know, pay attention to, uh, you know, beyond the folks that just are blindly loyal to Trump. Jim Schultz, George Conway, good to have you both here tonight. Thank you.